Hello everyone, this is Thomas Pop from Zaxcom, and today I'm here to teach you a little bit more about the Nomad Field Recorder. Now specifically, today we're going to be dealing with the ENG setup menu. So if you haven't already, let's go ahead and turn on the Nomad. After the Nomad boots up, press the menu button and scroll down to ENG setup. Now this ENG setup menu might be a little intimidating at first, but don't worry, it's actually really simple. So let's start at the top and make our way to the bottom. The first thing is headphone number two volume. Now if you can remember back, in the introducing the Nomad video, there happens to be a headphone two jack located on the right side of the Nomad. This allows you to have a completely separate feed going to an additional set of headphones. This way you don't have to split out of your primary headphones in order to feed audio to a boom operator or to someone else that needs to be listening as well. Now inside of this ENG setup menu, this headphone number two volume allows you to turn up and down the gain of the headphones for that second person. Next, we have the set time and date. Now inside of this menu, you have the ability to change the date as well as the time. And it's as simple as pushing in the menu button and scrolling to change the value of the numbers. So when you're done setting the time and date, press the back button to exit. Next, we have the limiter enable menu. By entering into this menu, you will notice that you have the ability to enable limiters on each of your card tracks as well as your outputs. If you need to enable any limiters, go ahead and do so now, and when you're done, back out to the ENG setup menu. Now the next three menus that you will see in the ENG setup menu is input limiter, output limiter, and card limiter. These menus allow you to adjust the settings of each limiter that's in your signal chain. This allows you to have completely separate input limiters, output limiters, as well as limiters that go to the card tracks on your compact flash recorder. This allows you more versatility than just having input limiters inside of your machine. So let's just enter into the input limiter menu to see what it's all about. Inside, it's a basic limiter setting menu. It allows you to adjust the attack, decay, threshold, and ratio of your input limiter. If you back out of the input limiter menu, you will notice that the output limiter as well as the card limiter have the exact same settings, with the exception that the output and card limiters have the ability to apply makeup gain to the signal after it's been compressed by your limiter's settings. Now just remember, just because you adjust the settings of each of these limiters does not mean that they're enabled. In order to enable them, you need to enter the limiter enable menu and select on what card tracks as well as outputs that the limiter is actually engaged on. When you're done adjusting the settings of each input, output, and card limiters, back out to the ENG setup menu so we can continue. Next, we have track names. This menu allows you to accurately label each of your tracks so when you turn in your media to post, they have an idea of what each track is that you were recording in the field. Now you will notice that my Nomad has 12 tracks available to it. Now if you don't have that many, that's okay. That just means that you may only have a four, six, or eight track Nomad. So let's go ahead and change the name of channel one. To do so, highlight number one and press menu. When inside, you have a simple keyboard setup that allows you to scroll left and right to change the name. Now you may not remember, but in the primary and backup cards video, I taught you a couple shortcuts to help you get through typing all of this text a little bit faster. If you're tired of scrolling the wheel over and over from left to right in order to get to different lines, know that you can hold in the menu button and turn the knob to go up and down. You also have the ability to bring in a lowercase alphabet if you hold in the menu button. Now if you make a mistake while you're typing, 
Use the left arrow that's located near the OK button in order to go back so you can change the letter values. When you're done labeling your track, for example, mine says Mix right now, go ahead and press OK by using the menu button. It couldn't be easier to label your track names, so go ahead and continue if you need to label any more tracks. And when you're done, press the Back button. The next menu deals with monitor names. This one is very similar to track names, however this one deals with your headphone presets. You have the ability to have up to 12 presets for your headphones inside of the Nomad at any given time. You can use this menu to change the monitor names of each of your headphone presets. This will allow you to name all of your headphone presets so that when you're clicking through them on the fly, there's no question about what you're listening to. Now this menu only allows you to set up the monitoring names for each of your presets. It doesn't allow you to route what each of these presets are listening to. I'm going to teach you that in a different video. Now the next menu is the Warnings Setup menu. Now don't let this one scare you. This one is specifically to indicate to you when certain parameters are met. For example, internal or external battery warnings if your batteries get too low. For example, if you're powering your Nomad externally using an MD6 or a BDS battery box, you can set a warning threshold level that when your IDX lithium battery goes below a certain point, it will set a beep off in your ears to tell you it's time to change the battery. It will also display a low battery indicator on the screen. You can do so for internal batteries as well as external sources. You can also have it beep when you go on battery, when there's low disk space, or when you hit record and stop, as well as change the loudness of the beep so it doesn't startle you in your ears. Moving on, we have menus for both input and output levels. Let's go ahead and enter the input levels menu. Inside of this menu, you will notice that you have the ability to adjust your slate level for both the internal and external slate sources. To do so, push the menu button and use the scroll wheel to adjust accordingly. You also have the ability to adjust the levels for the returns 1 through 4 located on the right side of the Nomad. Now depending on the Nomad that you purchased, you may also have an option in this menu to adjust the digital inputs for your Nomad. Now let's go ahead and back out, and this time, let's enter the Output Levels menu. Inside of this menu, you will notice that you have the ability to independently adjust the output levels for not only your XLR outputs, but your TA5 outputs and your mono and tape outputs as well. Each of these outputs allows you to adjust the output from 0 dBU to minus 10 and to minus 35 decibels. This allows you to output a mic level signal if need be. Now the only other thing to know about this menu is the mono and tape out allows you to adjust the output in steps of one decibel per turn. Next, we have adjustments for LCD brightness as well as LED brightness for our Nomad. Take a look what happens when I adjust the LCD brightness. And next, the LED brightness. This is extremely beneficial if you need to darken your screen if you're shooting in a dark room, or if you're shooting out in bright sunlight and you need to brighten the screen in order to see it. Next, you have transport keys. This setting allows you to adjust what the buttons on the front of the Nomad do. The options that you have are shifted and unshifted. Unshifted allows the buttons on the front of the Nomad to work for what they were intended to be, which is timecode, automix, zaxnet, bus, PFL, setup, 
com, and slate. What this means is by pressing any of the buttons on the front of the Nomad will perform what the button actually says. For example, by pressing the TC button, you will enter the timecode menus. A mix stands for auto mix, Z net is for Zax net, and so forth. So you may be asking yourself, well, if this is the case, how do I put this machine in and out of record? Well, this is what transport keys is all about. You have the ability to select unshifted or shifted. If you select shifted, this means that in order to access record, play, stop, and all of your other transport controls, you need to hold in the menu knob while pressing a button to access what is written above the button. For example, to go into record, you would hold in the menu button and press timecode. In order to stop, you would hold in menu and press Znet. Now this is great if you're working on a reality show and you're mixing multiple wires. But what happens if you're working and you're holding a boom above your head and you only have one hand available to put the machine in and out of record? Well, there is a shortcut in order to do this. In order to put the machine into record by only using one hand, press and hold the timecode button. The machine will go into record. And to stop, hold in the Zaxnet button. This is a quick and easy way to change the transport mode of your machine. Well, what happens if you change the transport keys settings to unshifted? Well, it will reverse the roles of the buttons on the front of the Nomad. For example, the timecode button will now be a dedicated record button, and the Znet will be a dedicated stop, and so forth. Well, this is great, but what happens if I need to get into the timecode menu? Well, in order to do that, you would hold in the menu knob and press the timecode button, and then it will take you to the timecode menus. This is the same for any of the other buttons on the front of the Nomad. This setting is used if you're more comfortable with having the front buttons on the Nomad be your transport controls. Next in the ENG setup menu, is tone frequency and tone level. This allows you to change the tone frequency and level for calibrating machines. For example, we have it set up at 1 kilohertz at minus 20 decibels. After tone frequency and level, you have the option to turn on or off AES 42 power. This allows you to connect a digital microphone into your digital inputs and supply power to up to two microphones. Last but not least, let's go into the Advanced Setup menu. The Advanced Setup menu is not something that you're going to be going into on a daily basis, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with the settings, but I will describe a few of the settings inside just so you know what they do. The first one is Prevent Empty Pan. What this means is that you have the ability in this machine to set up panning left, center, and right for each of your left and right outputs that you would send to a camera or to a stereo hop. Now, Prevent Empty Pan disables you from dropping an input to an output while changing its routing status. It will only allow you to select left, center, or right, not off. I'll describe all of this in greater detail in another video. The display speed is something that you will probably never have to change. However, just so you know what it does, if you are running a bunch of different compressors and limiters and effects inside of your Nomad, you may notice that the screen starts to be a little bit sluggish. If it does, you can set the display speed to slow in order to make it a little bit more smooth. However, like I said, you will probably never have to touch this, so just go ahead and leave it on fast. Next, we have the AES42 high voltage. Go ahead and leave this to off. This is only dealing with those digital microphones, so if you don't have them, don't worry about this. The next section is burn bootloader. This is all dealing with the bootloader 
which if you remember from updating the Nomad video, deals with the operating system that is underlying inside of the Nomad that turns on once you flip the power switch on. If you need to know how to use this bootloader menu, go ahead and watch the updating the Nomad video. Debug bits is something that is used if there are problems with your Nomad. It will give you relevant information that you can give to Zaxcom to know the state of the machine. And last but not least, the upgrade code. If you have purchased a Nomad 6 or 8, you have the ability to upgrade the unit to a higher track count by purchasing an upgrade package from Zaxcom. All you have to do is when you purchase your upgrade, they will give you a code and you can enter it into this machine. Once entered, your machine will be up to date with the newer track count. And that's it for the Nomad ENG setup menu. If you have any questions, please contact us at www.zaxcom.com. Once again, my name is Thomas Pop, and I'm from Zaxcom. Thanks for watching.